Got the fast track on, got the dump trailer on. Is it time to cart some stone? No, it's not cart time to cart some stone, they've paid. Uh, I know everyone was looking forward to it. I was actually, thought it would be quite good um, getting some stone back, but no, it, they've paid, so happy days. But it's a shame that we had to threaten them with what we were gonna do to get paid. Get a biomass boiler, they said. Renewable energy. Blocked up. This boiler's jammed up with the pellets, so we've had to scoop them out with a plant pot. Anyway, in the pot, and then we found the problem. There's a piece of stick or something that's jammed in this auger. It carries the, the chip up to the top. It's not what you want in your wood pellets. That's what they should look like. I don't know what it is, it's like composite wood, like a dowel. They definitely jammed it up. So just Put out the organ now, we'll just fill it back up with pellets. Out I'm not sure if you can see on the video, but you definitely can with the naked eye. Can you see like some white sort of stripes in the corn, in the wheat? That's the little bit of tipping from the liquid fertilizer. It's uh, scorched it ever so slightly. Should recover soon anyway. Lads are busy fixing the chipper on TikTok. <laughs> Can I say it is funny? Can you tell what it is yet? We're just putting bits on the chipper now, but for some reason every time we go to parts they come wrong. So that's what they should look like. And these are what's come a lot thicker. But the ones that we took up have a partner of eight R2 or 8K2. And these say 8K2 on them as well, but they're clearly wrong. And they say on them K1. And then sometimes the tops that sit on them come wrong and they're twice the size they need. So we're trying to get to the bottom of what's going on, but we've got a full set, a box of what's supposed to be a full set, and half of them are all different. But if you look, that's how much they've worn. So it's all worn there, it should be that big. And that's what holds the knife in so that the knives can fall off easy. Because we've finished putting liquid fert on for a while, we're just giving the sprayer a really good wash off so that if there's any like residue or bits of liquid fert knocking around on it, it's 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 gone because it's kind of corrosive, it's a bit like salt, sort of like salty water or sea sea salt, sea water, you know, it can really rust things. So clean all that off now, oil it all up, grease it all up, put it in the shed, let it dry off. It could be ready for another day. Mini Merlot has been parked here for two days now, and that was the ram that I fixed the seals on, and there's not a puddle underneath at all. So that's the result. I'm in one of the drying floor sheds. I've basically got a damp back, and this wall is probably about 50 degrees. So I'm just leaning against it to warm up because I've got cold and wet, just lovely. So this is one that we fill with chip every single day. Well, no, every two days, depending on what depth we put it, it'll either dry in a day or it'll dry in two days. So sometimes we, if we're in a hurry, we'll do just two, like meter deep, that'll dry in 24 hours. Or sometimes we put it two meters deep and that takes about 48 hours. And then this one really is the one that we use all the time on the chip. So that we don't have to clean down between wheat and barley and beans and stuff like that. This always stays on chip. So it's uh, always the warmest place on the farm, especially if you've got cold and wet. Discharging a bit of oilseed rape out the dryer that we've been putting through the cleaner. Not a lot left now in the shed. I don't know, maybe 100 ton or something, 120 ton. It's coming out of there now, on top. And we're just sweeping out the intake bit now because we won't be using it for a bit. Just putting these fly plywood boards back on here now because otherwise we get leaves blowing across the yard when it's windy and falling into this elevator underneath. So they we built this about six or seven years ago. So at harvest, we fill this bay up with grain and it automatically feeds it along this elevator under the wall and into the grain dryer at the back there, dries it and spits into the shed. Me and Adam are under the combine and we just took this switch off now because we can't pull the new header with this combine because the draw will be too short. So we're going to use this to make a hitch for towing the, the chip around. But we might bolt an eye on that just in case we ever need to tow the combine backwards. Or really, it's probably better just strap around the axle to be fair. Now in the shed to look at the drill. First thing everyone keeps saying, am I going to need a bigger tractor for it? Well, no. 
it's 12 meters the other one was six the other one took no pulling at all this one hasn't really got any more cultures on it so what i mean by cultures is the black thing sticking out the top that go into the ground when it's folded out they're at 25 centimeter row spaces on the other drill i think they were 12 and a half centimeter so this will do the, sow the corn in wider rows so it needs there's less wear in part well there's not less wear in parts there's the same amount but it's twice the width but it's okay again it doesn't take as much pulling another common question keeps being asked is don't the wheels need to be bigger when it's on the ground well no they're only transport wheels when it's working in the field most of the weight runs on the cultures at the top and when you turn at the end because it's so wide and the way it works we can actually turn and run down the headland tram line for turning at the end so that's that's another reason it's got three hoppers on it but for different so you can put fertilizer seed oil seed rape different things all down at the same time or when you're sowing wheat you can put starter fur and slug pellets when you're sowing rape you can put two different blends of fertilizer and rape in the front as well I'll fold it out and probably go a little bit more in depth over the weekend because I don't think I'm going to be busy, too busy this weekend because it's obviously raining. But also briefly, I'll just sort of mention the cost of it. So it was, smell of making the noise. It was just shy of 140,000, which if you say it quick, doesn't sound a lot, but I had a, quite a good trading with my other drill. I managed to get nearly a 9,000 pound grant towards it. So it's working out the same payments each year as the other one was costing me for the last four. So I've doubled my drilling capacity for the same payments, which to me is a result. Now, that's around 20 grand a year, which sounds a lot, but when you divide it over maybe 1,500 acres, or if we do something for Bill, it could be getting up to near 2,000. It's actually quite cheap drilling. I remember the first drill I bought was in 2006, first new drill, and it cost me 13,000 quid. This has cost 10 times more, and it's only well, four times as wide but that also kind of justifies the fact that back then we were drilling like 300 acres and now we're drilling five times that so in reality we've got less width of drill now than we did have back then over the acres we're covering so it's a real pinch point in september it's the only month that, um, that that my neighbor ian says he wished he had two off and i think he's right so if we can drill double the acres on the good days and no acres on bad days, then that will basically pay for that drill, hands down. It's just the economy of scale of spreading it over that, that distance. The other advantage to it as well is it's obviously 12 meters wide. The combine will have a 12 meter header on it. Well, it'll be 12.3 the combine. So it's got a bit of an overlap at the end if the corn's on an angle. That means that the tractor, the drill and the combine will go up and down the field all in the same place. So if it's going up and down all in the same place, it means that we're not doing damage to the soil structure other than every 12 meters. So we ordered a longer order on the combine. We managed to change the order on the combine because I'd ordered the combine before the drill. Realized I was changing the drill, could go to 12 meters. So we ordered a longer order on the combine. So that when the combine empties, that will empty out right 12 meters from itself. So we can run the grain trailers also down the middle. The only problem then is once we've bailed the straw, if we bail the straw, some will chop is then we need to take a tele on the field to move the bales and that's the only thing that will go off the tram lines really because the rollers we've got are also 12 meters if we have to do corrective cultivations they'll be done at three or four or six meters but they will be cultivations by nature so the tractor will drive along the field make compaction whatever's on the back will lift that compaction sorry noisy merlo we'll, we'll relieve that compaction and that then it will be ready for the drill simple as that the other good thing about it is it's, it's, I've just noticed it's cherry red. So it's a nice cherry red color. Um, the, the John Deere drill as well, very, very good drill. Other than a few little bits that I had to order for it, which was shockingly expensive. I think I had it three seasons, three and a half seasons. Didn't really cost me anything to run because it was new. There was warranty on it, but a few issues. John Deere upgraded parts that were wrong and, and that was it. Hopefully the same will be with this one. It's got warranty on it. It's not a very long warranty, but with everything being new and ready to go, hopefully it'll do maybe five years here and then we'll swap it then for a new one because I don't like fixing things because we basically spend money on it and it's still worth the same as it was before you spent the money on it generally. So that's the methodology about having a big drill. Funny actually, I remember the AHDB did a, a webinar, it's probably still online somewhere, and it, it was entitled Farming for Machinery or Machinery for Farming. Well, I farm for machinery, 
but really you should say um, you should be you should I farm for machinery because I like machinery but really you should have machinery for farming if you get me so you, you buy it because you're farming not not the other way now like I like farming so I can buy machinery yeah so on the front of it is a fence 724 240 horsepower it won't be a problem the last drill I had was six meter you could have used that on you know 150 horsepower tractor 120 maybe well if you double that you're at 240 which is what that is and it's only going in that much and we're not really moving any soil so that's why it doesn't really take much more pulling than a set of rollers and we have a set of 12 meter rollers and you pull them with a 6920 John Deere which is I don't know 160 horses was it standard maybe 170 I can't remember someone will obviously know and comment there's another thing as well actually while I'm on see if you can get your head around this I think I've got my head around it and uh, I was trying to explain to someone else they didn't but then I did explain to someone else and they did if we're in the field with a six meter drill and we're going up and down imagine that we spend 80% of the time going up and down the field and 20% of the time turning with this drill we'll spend only 10% of the time turning because we've not got to turn as much so when this is in the field drilling 90% of the time it will be sowing the 6 metre drill spent 20% of its time turning so the effect is now this is not just 100% faster it's 110% faster is the way it works in my head so it, does anyone disagree with that or does everyone agree because it, it hurt my brain trying to work it out and then trying to explain to someone else that didn't get it just I just give up but have a think about it and let me know in the comments just what we need soft tire this was Adam's design for the the chipper moving tool this was my design we went with my design because that didn't make sense it looked like a fire guard Adam's made this today so it's for moving the chipper so that's the hitch off the combine it's a merlo bracket just gotta finish it off put the bottom pin on but we're obviously just trying it check it all works first dead easy quiz question for you what's that black tube for on the front of these trailers we've all got them on if you look didn't you know leave a comment below we don't normally do it in three takes but i've just swore and then and then adam's on the phone swearing at something in the background but it doesn't normally happen here basically that used to be on the back of the, the chipper underneath there where sam is and it used to collect all the debris and different things i said sh1t before anyway we've taken it off so it doesn't collect debris because if we ever move the chipper on the road we'll be using a 12 volt lighting system not 24 volt so we'll use a different lighting board and more magnetic lights so now hopefully this conveyor belt won't gather up all the rubbish underneath and jam up so this was yesterday's quiz question why does the end of the tape measure move but it basically so it's like an absolute zero it moves the thickness of of itself so if you if you measure up against something it pushes that way if you're measuring over the edge of something it lifts up and then so the tape measure the yellow bit the bits with the numbers on is always right at the start of what you're measuring whether you're measuring an internal bit or an external bit i always used to think they were poorly made because they used to rubble on the rivets that's about all for today hope you've enjoyed it if you have click like uh, obviously have a guess at the quiz question leave a comment below subscribe by clicking sort of like here and watch another video by clicking here and i'll see you tomorrow oh sorry i've got a guest outro as well from Kyle, so here it is.